There once came a time where the egg was scarce. The chickens, they couldn't figure it out. They searched their little tiny brains. How can I make an egg? But they sat inside their little tiny boxes and nothing came out. What were Americans to do? The egg, it was the staple of the American diet. The morning breakfast that brought joy and protein. A simple piece of fruit, maybe a crusty piece of bread, not gonna do. It caused fighting. It caused discrepancies in the family. Americans were torn. But then there did come a roost. A roost so squawky, so eggy it couldn't be stopped. It was the Rackley Roost. That Rackley Roost is popping out little balls of protein every day. Just plucking them out of that nested box and putting them in my wicker basket thing. Magic pastel balls of protein. Giving them that delicious feed that couldn't stop eating, making beautiful feathers and eggs. Look at that frizzle. This is its male counterpart. Doesn't look so good. Making awesome looking cockerels. Look at that thing on top of its head. And then there was the Osterlord dance. So happy. Beautiful eggs on the counter. Blue and brown. Wife happy. Eggs cracking. Golden yolks going in that sizzle pan. Making that protein breakfast we all dream of. Then that rooster got a little crazy and won't scratch me in the face, but it's all good because I got a delicious breakfast on the way. Welcome on back to the treehouse, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed that little snippet. If you did, smash that like button. Today, we got a little home vlog for you, but we're also looking at what is going on with eggs? And what is going on with these, these feeds, this conspiracy? If you've been to the grocery store lately looking at eggs, you might notice that there's not many there. They're highly priced. And also recently, in the news, I've seen just backyard chicken uh, people like me are having trouble getting eggs out of their chickens. So they're trying to skirt the game of buying eggs at the grocery store, which I will say it is in most cases more expensive to uh, produce your own eggs, but at least you know where they're coming from and it's fun to have some some chickens around. But why the lack of egg production from backyard chicken people? Now this time of year is like the worst time for egg production. It, it's cold, a lot of chickens get, you know, cold and flus just like we do. Avian illnesses, that stops them from laying. And so I usually get the least amount of eggs during the winter, just like everybody else. Now, luckily, I'm here in Texas, so we have a very light winter. But I notice when we have real cold weeks, you know, the egg production does go down. But the rumor is, if you're using certain brands of feeds, then the, the hens just stop laying. And if you go full tinfoil hat, you know, they're trying, to, they're trying to stop us. They're trying to stop backyard chicken people from growing their own eggs. I, I don't know. I'm here to tell you that I do not have that problem and I'm, I'm going to show you guys the feed that I use and then also just, just my routine with the chickens. Uh, I, don't, I don't just give them straight feed. They always have on-demand feed, but there's other ways of feeding your chickens that don't involve buying feed from the store. Oh, look at that. Look at that little saddle. Saddle feather right there. Isn't that, isn't that cool? Some people use that to make flies. That's out of Colonel Sanders. So if you've got the space, you just let them run around. I know it's winter time right now, but in the springtime, there are bugs everywhere. There's things growing. And since I live in Texas, we've got chickweed growing all over the ground. There's grasses for them to eat. They love to eat grass and bugs. That's like their primo diet. Besides scratch, which is just like grains and corn and stuff like that. Those are like treats. But good protein, good sustenance, just literally just let them eat grass. Not long grass, so long grass can get caught up in their in the crops, cause some issues, you know, stuff that's a little bit longer than this. 
but short grass, <clears throat> just let them munch on that. It's good stuff for them. One of my bloobies, she's getting ready to pop one out right now. She's getting squawky. She's on top of the, on the box. She's getting ready to go in there and squat one out for us. Another thing that we do is we just have a little basket we keep in the kitchen. It's called the chicken bucket basket thing. And we put in zip sandwiches, you know, spare meats, not chicken, of course. Uh, stuff the kids don't eat, extra berries, you know, salad that may be turning a little uh, brown mushy that you don't want to eat. Just throw it in there and they'll just scarf it. Another hack is buying spinach at the grocery store and not like the stuff in the plastic container, but the dirty unwashed spinach that they just slap a rubber band around and it's only like a couple of bucks. And that stuff is just full of uh, nutrients and honestly, some of the, uh, the darkest orangest yolks that we've ever produced have been when we're just slamming that spinach at them. It's just cheap, you know, uh, obviously it doesn't last very long, but if you're at the grocery store, pick some of it up, give them a couple of, of uh, servings of that throughout the week and that's really good stuff for them. If you're feeding them the veg, they gotta have grit to, uh, to work that stuff out in their crop. They don't need grit if you're just giving them feed. So I always keep an on-demand feeder in here. Just a, a, literally a, uh, I think it's a five gallon, maybe it's a two and a half gallon. So they always have something they can peck on. So this is how I give them on-demand feed right here. This will usually last when I fill this thing up about a week. And uh, I buy one bag of feed a month. And I think it's about 24, 25 bucks, something like that. And it's a layer crumble, 16% protein. I actually don't need to go get any right now. I've got plenty in my bucket, but I'm going to go buy some more because I suspect, I suspect there might be a little run on some of the other brands that are, were not on the list that uh, was posted on <clears throat> social media and the news. Okay. Okay, you guys are ready to lay. So so it is like mid-morning right now, and they are, when they get ready to pop them out, they just start squawking like that. Then they go into the nesting box, and, the, and they start doing their thing. This one is just surprisingly loud. This is my little frizzle right here, and she produces some some cute little eggs. She's actually pretty uh, pretty consistent with her, with her egg laying, but they're tiny compared to like the Osterlorp, There she goes. They're happy, healthy chickens. Um, let's go to the store. I'm gonna show you what feed that I use uh, that, I, that I think is pretty good. I think it's a pretty good feed. I don't, I'm not a scientist, but I bought it because it smells like pizza. Okay, all this is my layer feed. This is what I use. I, I used this brand when they were chicks as well for the grower feed. Um, but this one's a 16% protein. It literally smells like pizza because they use uh, oregano oils, which is supposed to promote healthy egg and weight size and all that stuff. So I don't know the big differences between uh, the other brands, but this one, um, I, I'd never tried it. I decided to, to go with it um, for my chicks. And obviously when they got to 16 weeks, started them on the, the layer feed. And uh, the roosters eat it as well. And they're happy and healthy and do it. I mean, just look at that, that wide dot right there. It just looks beautiful. Silver laced beauty. Great imagery there. Natural oils. Good marketing. Then it says right here, it's what's inside that counts. And then it shows you the actual nutrition facts. I mean, there's not uh, soybean oil, soy beans, which I'm not not a huge fan of. 
I used to buy a feed that was completely soy free because Stephanie is allergic to soy and it was just way too expensive. It was twice as much as this, so I stopped feeding it. But uh, I would have to get Stephanie to look at this and see if this is, you know, decent or not. But all I know is I'm producing some fatties. Speaking of that, let's roll into the coop right now and see who has laid an egg since it's been about an hour and a half. I bet you we at least got one in here. We got one bluebie in here. Gals? How we doing, gals? Yep, a little rooster fighting. Um, Mr. Penny here, he's still the dominant crower. And poor Colonel Sanders, he's, he's become more docile. Sometimes he'll even let me just pick him up, which is... Uh, he used to never let me pick him up. Uh, uh, oh, wait a second. Uh-oh. Frizzle? What are we doing here, Frizzle? Mr. Penny, Mr. Penny. Trying to put her in... Oh, no. You guys, this happens sometimes. This one right here, the naked neck, sometimes she will lay an egg that's not in the nesting box. And then they all follow suit. So, we end up with eggs not in the nesting box. So now we got our three for the day. Whichever one lays next, we'll, we'll lay in there. And we'll, we'll probably get four. Yeah. And it smells like Irish Spring in here still. That, that soap is, I don't know what kind of stuff is going on in there, but that stuff smells forever. It, it, I've got it in my camper too. My camper smells like Irish Spring. It, the, the scent is just crazy. The reason I put it in there is for the mosquitoes. Mosquitoes do not like it. Keeps them out of there. So Irish Spring soap, little chicken coop hack. Speaking of the camper, big upgrades coming. We're basically going to rip out the, uh, the current wiring of the camper and go full uh, extended off-grid conversion with lithiums and new uh, solar um, charger system. So, all that's coming on another video if you guys are going to be uh, doing some off-grid stuff, want to get crazy with your chicken eggs, your off-grid camper, you, you can never be seen again. You just go out there and have a full system. I've even got the batteries ready to go, and I'm going to be doing an upgrade on the bass boat as well, which is coming really soon, like probably next video. So ladies and gentlemen, this is about half a week's worth of eggs. So this is a little egg tray that I built. It's raised in the back. I don't know if y'all can see that. So they'll sort of roll down there. I have some spare wood I had I made a desk out of. Thought it'd be kind of cool to make a little egg, uh, egg deal for the kitchen countertop. Well, this is about half a week's worth. So when we use the eggs, these will roll down. And there's something to roll in the eggs. I, I, I don't, I don't know exactly. They're supposed to all roll down like that. Kind of rotates them, keeps them going. These are our little frizzle eggs. You know, they're not that big. But then we got these big blue whoppers that are just awesome. These are my pride and joys right here. So these are ones that are unwashed. Uh, if they're like really poopy, muddy, nasty. We'll throw them into the fridge. We've got an egg tray in here. It's empty right now, but we'll wash them and then refrigerate them. Once you wash that protective coating off the egg, then you got to refrigerate it. So the ones you buy at the grocery store, they've, they've been washed and everything that look clean, but you get your own eggs. You get a lot of them that look kind of poopy and muddy on them rainy days, but no big deal. It's what's on the inside that counts. Now here's the other deal that we just keep in the kitchen right here. So this is the chicken bucket basket thing. Uh, chickens absolutely love strawberries. We eat a lot of strawberries, berries, other stuff like that. Super acidic fruits like oranges, not the best for them, but we'll just throw that in there anyway. Little bread ends, any sort of little scraps, as long as it's not chicken, that goes out to them. So we will give them a special treat right now after laying a couple eggs. So the other thing that you can do if you're worried about predators, and you still want to feed them all the natural stuff that you may have in your yard is you can just pluck out the clovers and the chickweed and the dandelions and all that other stuff and put it in their 
in the coop. You can just go pick it and put it in there. I mean, it's literally just like plucking a salad for them. If you don't want to let them free range, where you got coyotes, foxes, hawks, and all that, you know, predator stuff. Oh yeah, that's like something a deer would eat right there. Yummy. This is the chickweed. That's the chickweed. And I can just gobble that up. You guys can get after the strawberries. Have a little citrus delight. Might as well be a mimosa for you here. Now I need to add one more bird to the mix here. So you guys know the rat problem we've had here. Now recently we've had coyotes just swarming the property. I mean, they come in just about every day. It was like totally ice and sleet out here the other day. And I, I came out here, I heard the chickens squawk and they were all going nuts. And there was a coyote out in the yard and I ran him off and he was literally breaking the ice branches for like a hundred yards. Since we've had the coyotes around, honestly, the rats, they've been at a minimum. And uh, I'm sure there's bobcats and I haven't seen any foxes in a while, but to get an aerial defense on these rats, we're coming in hot with an owl house. LFD made this for Stephanie for her birthday. Well, birthday owl house. And I'm gonna stick it in one of these oak trees that's sitting above the coop. So at night, hopefully we get an owl that takes resonance in here. It's not gonna be a big owl. It's not gonna be one of those like big barred owls that might actually eat chickens. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if that's a thing. But a little owl, good old rat eater. Just have him live in there and come down at night, get the rats, it'll be perfect scenario. So building a sustainable ecosystem in the backyard, that's what we got going on. We're gonna have, you know, full solar capabilities. We're gonna be fully off grid. If the power goes out, if the balloons come over, EMPs, I'm ready, baby. I'm ready to go. All righty, all that is gonna do it for today's home vlog here at the Rackley Roost. If you're thinking about getting hens, getting some chickens, the springtime is a, is a good time to do it. Uh, there's so many little bugs and critters running around on the ground, it makes them easy, easy to raise them. And it's not frigidly cold. So in the next month or so uh, across the US, uh, I would say it'd be a good time. If you live down in the South, you go ahead and get your chickens right now, start raising them and in 16 weeks, you should start getting some eggs. If you're having problems getting eggs, try the feed that I've used uh, and, and start giving them your scraps. If there's something in the feeds, maybe it's a bad batch of feed, I don't know. Uh, it can't, it, feeding them bread scraps and stuff can't be worse than, than what's going on if you're not getting any eggs. But I have not seen any issues. I don't know anyone personally. I've just seen online and on the news people have problems getting eggs. So. It ain't a problem here. Alrighty, I'll wishing you plentiful bounty and Godspeed in the great outdoors. I'll see you on the next adventure.